Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today we have two new modifications that we're going to be talking about for this Harley Benton TE62CC, and we're also going to be answering a viewer's question in the form of a visual. He wanted to know if a Vibermate to fit a Bigsby would go on this guitar without having to alter the pick guard. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, one of you guys in the comments was asking me if a Bigsby would be a drop in fit if you used a Vibermate. We're going to test that out right now. Now I'm not gonna actually be installing this. I just wanna see if it's gonna fit in with the pick guard without alteration. And as you can see, it would. So if you use the Vibermate bridge for a vintage style Telecaster, this is gonna work absolutely perfect. We're not gonna be putting the rest of it on, but now that I know this is like this, I know it would work. All we'd have to do is unscrew the bottom here where the strap pin is, then the rest of the Bigsby would sit on, just like that. All right, so the first mod for this guitar that we've already installed are the Goto vintage locking style tuners. They're really cool the way they work. They're not like the traditional ones that go on normal fenders. They actually screw out like that. Then you feed the string through, you tighten it, or you loosen it, whatever you're doing. You tighten it, once the string is caught, then you actually move the machine head to have it lock into place and cut after that, which is really nice. The good news here is, if you buy the Goto ones, the ones that I mentioned, the ones that come on the Fender Made in Japan Hybrid Series guitars, amongst other models, and also available at stumac.com. I always link those whenever I talk about these. I rave about them. You didn't use, I didn't need to change the actual ferrules in between here. And sometimes when you're replacing tuning pegs, the ferrules that come stock in the instrument, which are these little washer looking things, they actually go inside the neck, they sit in recessed, and the tuners go in from the bottom through those, they don't always fit. So the fact that this is a completely 100% drop in upgrade means it's something that's one less thing of a headache to worry about if it's something that you wanted to modify. And the second new part that we have ready to go is this new pre-slotted bone nut. Now, when something comes pre-slotted, in case you've never done this before, it basically just means that they're guides. So if you look at those, obviously those are not thick enough for you to actually put a string in as is. So what it'll do is it'll give you an idea of which direction it should be going in because the larger divots obviously are going to be for the thicker gauge of strings and the smaller divots will be for the lighter gauge of strings. You're going to then use uh, nut files to be able to get these to the optimal height. We're going to do a whole video about that when we're actually ready to restring this guitar after we've gotten the rest of the parts in. I just don't feel like doing it twice and it makes more sense to do it that way when we're ready to install it. But just know we already got the part. All right, so everything that we're gonna do with the neck is done. The frets are polished, they're nice and level. We have a new bone nut that's ready to be installed once we figure out what we're gonna do with the body. And we have the Goto vintage locking tuners that are installed and ready to go. So this top half of the body is good to go. What about the rest of it? Well, I asked you guys for a lot of feedback here and I'm really happy that I've gotten as much as I have. I'm actually a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of people giving me recommendations and swearing by this brand or that pickup or this. This is what I've decided we're gonna do. If we threw in the Fishmans, we know it's gonna sound great. That's a lot of money. That's almost three times as much as the guitar costs. If we throw in the Fralins, we know they're gonna sound good. Price isn't really as big of a deal, but still, pretty significant. So what I decided I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be taking the advice of one of my regular viewers, Mr. JAS, amongst other people mentioned this brand to me. They're called Bootstrap. They are a very small shop in Ohio that hand wind their own pickups. We're going to be going with the original recipes. The lead time they say on their website is about three weeks. But guys, for $50 a set, if these things are good, we're going to be laughing our way to the bank and hopefully that's going to really really put this guy at a very low overall cost for everything that will be very competitive in that sense because the pickups are the one thing on this guitar that i feel like there is a massive room for improvement potentially now as far as the rest of the guitar and the modifications have gone we're going to be going old school fender american vintage brass saddles 
I'm just gonna wire up my own wiring harness here. All I need is a three-way switch and two 250K high quality CTS potentiometers. I have tons of excess wire and capacitors lying around. There's no point in spending all this extra money as far as a pre-wired harness. I can do it myself. And I've decided to change the goal to this to kind of spend as little as possible to try to get the most value for my dollar and see how well it translates compared to some of the higher end telecasters and other instruments that I do often play and I do often demo on this channel. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about my decision for these modifications. I simply couldn't say no to this brand. I had never heard of them before, but a few of you guys, especially like I mentioned, a regular viewer, kept saying how great these things are. I should look into them. I saw that there are, you know, a local United States company that doesn't outsource any of their stuff. Saw the price was really good and I figured this might be the ticket. It's really worth it to give smaller shops a little bit more of an air time. You can find a Fender demo, you can find a Duncan demo, a Fralin demo, all that stuff very, very easily. This makes it a little bit more interesting in that sense. And also it makes it so if you wanted to build this exact kind of guitar that we're gonna be doing with the same mods, a little bit more reasonable on your wallet. However, leave a like on the video. It really does help these videos reach a wider audience when you engage. That's just how the algorithm works or so I am told. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you tomorrow. We are going to be doing a comparison between the Fender Troublemaker Telecaster and the Gibson Wildwood Les Paul Standard. That should be very, very interesting indeed. Until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take it easy.